Please pray with me. Gracious God and Father in heaven, all praise and thanks to you for having drawn us here into your house today to hear your word, to also receive your sacrament. As you said to Moses, so also you say to us, take off your sins, for you are on holy ground. Because you are really here among us in a real way, through your word and sacrament. This is indeed a holy place. And we pray, O oh Lord, that we would respect that and also that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear your word. And that we would digest it and live it in our lives. And live with the strength that you alone can give to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of Christ, your Christian friends, grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis for today's message is the epistle reading which was read before. Paul's uh, uh, talking about his thorn in the flesh and God saying, my grace is sufficient for you. But especially on that last verse in that reading, when Paul says, when I am weak, then I am strong. How did that hit you? When I am weak, then I am strong. Huh? You gotta be kidding, Paul. What was that you said? That can't be. This just does not compute, for heaven's sakes. I know when I feel weak, I certainly don't feel strong. Today's Light, a devotional Bible reading, daily Bible reading guide, once recorded the following devotional thought, and I quote, now is not the time to panic, now is not the time to panic, not. Maybe you've mumbled words like these to yourself as you walk through a hard time. As the intensity of the trial deepened, perhaps you reached a point at which your resolve broke. Maybe you found yourself thinking or even roaring out loud, now is the time to panic. Every one of us has a breaking point. It may come sooner for some, later for others, but we all have a point of vulnerability we cannot master by sheer human willpower. How important then to learn by grace to lean on the Lord in every trial and every need. The lessons our Lord teaches us in the easier trial will hold us in good stead in the darker days. End of quotation. <laughs> weakness, the weaknesses that we feel in our lives, train us to rely on God's grace and strength alone. God's grace is all we need as He reveals His strength to us in our weakness. Remember how God revealed his strength to the people of Israel in Egypt and also at the Red Sea? God sent Moses to deliver his people from slavery in Egypt. Moses objected. He had all kinds of excuses. He felt he was inadequate. Finally, the Lord had enough with him and said, Moses, just go. When Moses arrived and demanded that Pharaoh free God's people, Pharaoh placed them in even greater oppression and bondage and treated them even more harshly. After experiencing 10 plagues from the Lord's hand, Pharaoh finally freed the people, but then changed his mind and trapped the people of Israel at the Red Sea. Once again, God revealed his strength as he opened a way for the people through the Red Sea and delivered them from slavery. Remember also how God revealed his strength to Gideon as judge of Israel? The land belonging to Gideon's tribe had been completely overrun by the Midianites. God called Gideon to lead his tribe against the Midianites, and again, Gideon objected. He said, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. However, Gideon was able to raise an army of 32,000 men. God said, wait a minute, Gideon. That's way too many. 
He reduced the army to 300, and God revealed his strength and used a mere 300 men to rout the mighty Midianite army. Remember also how the Father revealed his strength in our Lord Jesus Christ. The very Son of God appeared in the weakness of human flesh. Jesus was beaten, whipped, ridiculed, and rejected for us and for our salvation. Jesus did not appear strong in the Garden of Gethsemane as he in great agony prayed three times that the Father would remove the cup of suffering from him. Still, he always concluded the, with the words, Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus appeared to be weak and helpless as he hung on the cross. But by his grace and mercy, God used that apparent weakness to win the victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil through Jesus' death and resurrection. He defeated Satan and all of his angels and won the forgiveness of sins for our eternal salvation for us. But Satan certainly has not given up. Satan did not give up on Paul. Paul experienced hardship time and again. He himself tells us, I have had far greater labors, far more imprisonments with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers. And all of this led Paul to confess, we were so utterly burdened beyond our strength that we despaired of life itself. In addition, Paul was also afflicted with a thorn in his flesh that caused him great anguish and concern. Paul felt that the thorn kept him from doing the Lord's work as it should be done. God used the thorn to keep Paul from becoming conceited and proud because of the special revelations that God had given him. Three times, three times he asked God to remove the affliction. God's answer, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. So Paul responded, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God used Paul's weakness to train him to rely on his grace and strength alone. And Satan certainly has not given up on us either, has he? He delights in bringing trials and tribulations our way. He would love nothing more than to destroy the faith that the Spirit has created us within us in our baptism. Satan's fists pound us time and again. It is like a spiritual boxing match. Daily life brings constant reminders of some of our greatest weaknesses. Failure, inadequacy, impatience, pride, greed, selfishness, lust, ingratitude, illness or a new health issue, all of these and more are characteristics of our sinful nature. The effects of this fallenness weakens us as our health is threatened, our loved ones die, our marriages seem to unravel, and our bills and debts pile up beyond our financial resources, and we experience accidents, tragedies, and the like. All of these are characteristics of a of the imperfect, sin-broken world in which we live. And many times we try to muster our own strength to face life's trials. Indeed, someone on Facebook posted the following message from Heather Stillifson. And I quote, Things may be difficult for you right now, but it will all work out. Trust your inner strength. It's there for you when you need it most. Keep going. You will be glad you did. This sounds like a nice sentiment 
and may even be encouraging to some, but how true is it, really? Can we really pick ourselves up by our own bootstraps? We do not want our pride to be hurt, so we try to hide our weaknesses and boast of our strength. We put on a mask and act as if everything is A-OK -okay in our lives when inside we're falling apart. When problems come because of sin, we question God's love, mercy, and power. The children's song many of you learned when you were youngsters, Jesus Loves Me, also speaks about being weak and being strong. I'd like us now to sing the first stanza of Jesus Loves Me. Lynn? Jesus loves me forever in infinity. But just for this one time alone, let's change one word. Instead of saying they are weak, let's say we are weak and admit it to ourselves as well as to God. Lynn? Jesus loves me this I Lord and Savior, the one who faced the devil one-on-one, -on -one, head on, and he faced death in the grave, and he came out victorious on the other side of the grave, has given us the strength of his mercy, love, forgiveness, peace, and hope. When we are weak, God reveals our need for Christ. Failure in our weakness is a blessing. He leads us to rely not on a weak self, but on a strong Christ. Even as Paul confesses, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the psalmist also declares, no king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot say. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in His unfailing love, to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Weakness keeps us from foolish pride. God's strength is revealed and shines in our weakness. Luther once stated, there is a certain despair of man's own ability which must come before man is prepared to receive the grace of Christ. When we are at the very bottom, only then do we really see God's purpose. And he may delay that insight for some time to come. Only then, when we are completely empty of ourselves, can God begin to work. 
God has no use for cups half full. He wants us completely empty so he can fill us with himself. That's the end of Luther's quote. God's infinite wisdom knows what he is doing in our times of weakness and trial. He knows what we need to learn. He knows when and how we need to grow. He knows when and where we need to be free. He sustains our faith through his word and sacrament and supplies his strength to meet our daily trials. His grace is sufficient. It is all we need. His promise of glory fills us with hope. Christ's strength that overcame sin, death, and the devil uh, dwells with us in our weakness and is being made complete. And so like Paul says, when we are weak, then we are truly strong in Christ. Amen. The peace of God, may the peace of God keep our hearts and minds in the true faith until life everlasting. Amen.